It is July 15th, 2013 at 3 o'clock, and we're speaking with David Griffith. Right. Yeah, if you don't mind, just starting with your, your background. Okay, yeah. My name is David Griffith. Obviously, I came from Terre Haute, Indiana to move to Craig. Uh, in Terre Haute, I uh, went, to, went through high school, graduated from Wiley High School in 1969, went to... Ivy Tech High, uh, Technical College in Terre Haute. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't complete a degree. It was a two-year school. I didn't complete a degree, but my uh, studies were accounting. Mm -hmm. Finished that, and I started... <laughs> I got hired back by... When I didn't finish school, I had people that were worried about me, and they put me back to work uh, running an ice cream store on the campus of Indiana State University. Okay. I uh, got from that point. I went into carpentry. Uh, mm -hmm. Got into Carpenters Union, and in 1977, my cousin, who had just gotten his law degree from Boulder, had called me and said he'd moved to Craig, Colorado. Mm -hmm. He said this was a boom town and I should come out here and start a business with him. Mm -hmm. He was had his law degree and I had moved through the apprenticeship program into uh, through the through the apprenticeship program through into a foreman and into a superintendent and I didn't know anything about starting my own business, but my cousin said this was a boom town and you couldn't miss. Okay. And so <laughs> I came out here in 79. Okay. Uh, in which was great. Mm -hmm. uh, the place was very busy. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it as a boom town. In fact, everybody said it was a boom town. And I said, a boom town? This is a little bitty town. This is no boom town. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, when the boom town went bust in 1980, 81, 81, 82, I realized that it was a boom town. Mm -hmm. And that this little bitty town then became a really, really small town. Right. And I ended up having to work out of town. I didn't want to leave town. My my wife at the time worked at the hospital, and we had it was working pretty good. But I had to travel to Meeker and to Steamboat and to Bags mm -hmm. just to stay busy. Right. When we did move to town, because it was a boom town, which I wasn't convinced at the time, everybody asked you what you're doing here, <laughs> and we came in at the tail end of the boom, which we didn't realize. Right. And when you'd meet local people, they'd ask you, so what are you doing here? And I said, well, I came from Indiana, and I'm going to start my own little construction company. Mm -hmm. People then would say, oh, just more construction trash, huh? Mm -hmm. And so at that point, I coined the phrase construction trash. Okay. And today, it's on all my T-shirts, whether on the sleeve or on the back. Uh-huh on the hats, on on the sides of my hats, and all of my hands wear it with pride. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> because we're construction trash, that's what right. we are. But that's we're construction people and some people see it as trash. I, I saw it, I see that. When uh -huh. when the boom was here there was a there was a an area where they built trailer park and it was just for the construction people building the power the plant. Shadow Mountain? Shadow Mountain. Shadow They're Mountain. redoing that now. Right. It was only supposed to be a work camp, basically. Right. But the county and the city both put so much infrastructure in there to because it was so big, mm. it was supposed to go away. It never went away, right. and people kept building onto their trailers and so on and so mm -hmm. it became its own little entity out there and now they're having to redo all the infrastructure because it's all falling apart right. because it was temporary stuff mm. and so uh, the, the town is it, you've seen it do this and uh, after I was here for a while and the boom went bust 
and we were like one of the only construction companies local to stick around. Oh, really? Okay. When I say one of the only, there were probably four or five of us. But when it all shook out, we were one of the bigger ones left. Right. And we weren't big. You know, it was, it was my brother and I. And we had several laborers or, and other carpenters or whatever. But uh, Anyway, things worked out real good. We, we started getting... Uh, <clears throat> and in the construction industry, you, you only get work if you're the cheapest. Right. When you bid jobs. Mm -hmm. Well, we had gotten a reputation where we were the best... And so people would just call us and hire us at Cost Plus, which is the perfect for both parties because they get the best job done and we don't have to guess how much it's going to cost. We can just charge them when we're done. Well, my brother and I came out here together with my wife. He was only 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Didn't know the trade, so he learned the trade from me working with hand in hand with me, but we had worked with my father all the years in the past, learned to trade. In nineteen ninety he got electrocuted on a job. Oh wow. We were working uh up the Williams Fork. Mm -hmm. You're familiar where that is? Uh roughly. You go south out of town, fifteen miles and to Hamilton and you turn and go up that road. Okay. We're working up there on a big ranch. And he got into a power line, 7,200 volts. Basically killed him on the roof. I was working the ground. He s fell backwards, slid down the roof, upside down. When he, I went to try and catch him, running up to try and catch him, but he landed head first, and his head snapped back. So it broke his neck. Right. And the electrical thing killed him on the roof, but the hit the ground started his heart again. And so I didn't know any of that at the point. Right. I just saw him get electrocuted. Right. I dug his tongue out of his mouth, mm -hmm. did mouth to mouth, got him breathing. And so he came, I got him back to town uh -huh. in a 1959 Dodge Coronet that <laughs> a gentleman from Bags, Wyoming, or uh -huh. Savory, Wyoming, had given me as a bonus on a job. Mm -hmm. Two tone pink. Dodge Cornet. We had it up there because all of our other trucks were in town. Mm -hmm. Got him back to town. He lived, okay. He wow. came back to work after a year. Wow. In that year's time, he and I worked like hand in hand, mm -hmm. right, left and right hand. We thought alike because our Marine father had raised us and he just listened and I know that. paid attention. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I lost him, I <clears throat> was kind of at a loss, and so I hired a bunch of guys that did concrete work, and I didn't like concrete work or anything, mm. but I found out it made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to touch it, and these guys knew it, and I stood back. Mm -hmm. Danny, after my brother Danny, after a year, <clears throat> came back to work. It was a month or so into the working again, and we were working on a job, and he stepped off a ladder and broke his leg and ran a bone through his foot. The two of us sat down and cried. Oh my God. You know, because right. we thought, and he said, I don't think I can do this anymore. And I yeah. said, well, I don't blame you. Yeah. So he currently owns JW Snacks, okay. a restaurant here in town. Right. Which is named after my great grandfather mm -hmm. from Terre Haute, from West Terre Haute, Indiana. And the building is still JW Snacks in West Terre Haute to this day. I understand it's the oldest liquor license under the original name in Terre, in Indiana. Wow. Well, maybe it's just Terre Haute. I don't know. So, anyway, Danny is... We're no longer working together, mm -hmm. but it's excellent that he has a restaurant named after my great-grandfather in a town right. 1,200 miles away. Right. And if you look, that's the picture on... The main marquee outside is that's that's Great Granddad's snack. Oh, okay. In Tarot, Indiana. <laughs> right. So when we moved out here, Danny got the original cash register out of the original saloon. Uh -huh. I got the original slot machines out of the original saloon, mm -hmm. 
And so Danny has in his restaurant the original slot machine. Wow. This is more history about Indiana, oh, that's, but that's fine. Yeah. It's all I, that's what makes us tick is we came out kind of as a family mm. and we've made it work. That's awesome. You know, Danny at that point didn't have any kids. You know, now he's got two children. They both are get, just got married this, this year. <laughs> you know, it's been a long time ago. Right. But this town has been great to me. I mean, even though I went through that period where Danny got hurt so bad and 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 then came back and left, then it just became a matter of trying to figure out. I had a good name, mm -hmm. and so it was just a matter of hiring some guys to make my belief work, you know. And so I ended up, well, two years ago, one of the last guys that I hired, I had one guy work for me over 20 years. Wow. And I've had several guys that worked over 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. you know. So, And when I look at all this, I've probably had hundreds of kids work for me over the summers. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of cool when you live in Craig. Right. People walk up to you and go, "Hey, you remember me? I'm so and so." <laughs> and I look right at them and go, "No." <laughs> and then they say, "Then they'll say what they worked on." And I go, "Oh yeah." yeah. <laughs> because if you have got a job to put to them, mm -hmm. you know, then then it all makes sense. Right. So, uh, Craig, or Craig's like I said, been good to me. I, I mm. haven't had to go out of town since the '80s. To, oh. to stay alive here. Oh, for work. For work. Wow. Yeah. So it was just that little initial period where yeah. it was a and little lull. This last two years has been the toughest since the 80s. Okay. And uh, we did a little bit of stuff outside of town. We we work, there's a, a Bank of the West here in town. Hmm. Uh, my wife was the president of that. Oh, wow. For years, and she, it, well, she was president of the community first. When it changed the Bank of the West, she didn't like the corporation deal, and so right, she right. actually quit as a president of a bank. Wow. And we opened up an antique store mm -hmm. for her to do something. And we traveled back to Indiana, mm -hmm. and for three years we had the antique store. And uh, at that point, she was tired of, it wasn't challenging. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fun going to shopping, you know, to go back through the Midwest and right. and buy stuff and bring it back and clean it up and display it. And then you sit on your butt waiting for somebody to come through the door to sell it. Mm -hmm. And so I told Dan when I come in here and work, I say, I feel like I'm in my house. <laughs> because, of course, our whole house is, is nothing but antiques. Right. And... Uh, so she was <clears throat> to the point where she said, she, you know, would you, she asked me if I would care if she went back to work. I said, well, no, mm -hmm. no absolutely not. Right. And uh, so she said she was going to start reaching out. She was going to drive over to Steamboat because she kind of cut her ties in Craig. Mm -hmm. Well, at the same time, there was a new bank in town, and they were in a modular behind Wendy's and next door to, to uh, Kmart. Right. And it was called Moffat County State Bank. Okay. I believe that's what it was called. There was a, the bank that she was president of had previously been Moffat County Bank. Mm hmm Had changed names several times over the years. She was upset because they were trying to steal some of her old clients, even though she didn't work at the bank anymore. She mm -hmm. was still loyal to that bank. Mm -hmm. She quit it because she couldn't be loyal to the corporation that took the bank over. Well, the bank called me and they were getting ready to build a new bank and they were interviewing three contractors. And they uh, said, well, yeah, I'll be glad to interview, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I sat down with them and met with uh, the board a couple of times. And uh, it, it was a long process. In the interim, the day that my wife was going to Steamboat to interview for a banking position in Steamboat, this bank called her and asked her if she would like to go to work with them as a vice president. Oh, wow. She said, sure, she'd consider it. She went ahead and did her interview in Steamboat. 
she came back. She got hired at the bank. Mm -hmm. In the interim, they're talking to me still about building this bank. Right. And and I said to him, well, you know, you guys probably all know, but my wife is now an employee of the bank. She's a vice president. Are you still interested in talking to me? And I said, absolutely. Oh, okay. So I got to build <laughs> the new $4 million bank. Right. And she became vice president. And with, it looked like at that point, an opportunity in five years to become the president because mm -hmm. the initial president only wanted to be there for a short period of time and they knew that she could be the president. Right. Well, <laughs> in the interim, in that five years, my wife and I bought a home in the Caribbean on oh. the island of Roatan. Mm -hmm. And so I think it became evident to them that she wasn't married to the bank either. Mm -hmm. And so, but the original bank president's still there. Mm -hmm. So it's not like she lost an opportunity. She just hasn't had that opportunity. Right. And my plan uh, for APH is to turn APH over to one of my hands that I'm grooming mm -hmm. to take it over. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have any money, <laughs> but he's a son of one of my best friends. And I didn't get to train him or anything, but he's a hell of a carpenter. He's mm -hmm. a great guy. Mm -hmm. Good people person. Got the talent, I think, to take it over. Right. And so our our deal is that in maybe in two years I'll be able to retire mm -hmm. and we'll be able to live. We've got a cabin up on have you been to Freeman Reservoir outside of town yet? No. It's so about eighty five hundred feet. It's thirty five minutes from here. Okay. And you're in the Aspens and Pines. Wow. And we've got a, a place where you have to drive through the National Forest to get into our place. Right. And we've got a thousand foot log cabin sitting on a pond. So our our hope and dream is to live at the cabin six, eight, nine months out of the year and then the rest of it on the island or vice versa, whichever works. And we've got houses and apartments and stuff that we'll still have to maintain here in town. Mm -hmm. But well, I'm that close to being out of the business. Right. But I built such a good business that I hate to... If my brother was still with us, mm -hmm. he would have taken over. He's eight years younger than me. Right. Uh, and we looked at some nephews and, and so on to take it over. Nothing's happened. Nothing's worked. Right. And so this is the best thing I've got is to keep the APH legacy going. Mm. 34 years, you hate to see just sell everything and you get pennies on the dollar. I mean, but if I don't sell everything, I won't get anything mm -hmm. except right. maybe a check once a week, mm. you know. So I don't know. 35 years, 34 years, Craig, like I said, I started this. It's been great to us. Right, right. I've gotten an opportunity to we remodeled this building several times. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. We put the turrets on back up up on the top. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen the pictures where the, the turrets were gone in the forties, I think. The brick below the stucco all deteriorated and started falling off. Oh. So they wiped them off. And then uh we came in and we rebuilt the turrets, stuccoed those, uh, did some uh, work in the gun room up there, remodel that, okay. the access to the roof. We did some of this something down here. I don't, it, that's just it. It's been so long. Right. You don't remember everything. Right. And you're currently yeah. doing the back? We're currently doing the remodel on the back. Uh, mm. Come to the window. Sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> uh, and the building across the street. Uh -huh, the center of Craig. Oh, the center of Craig. Yeah, the uh, old church. Mm -hmm. I totally remodeled that uh, oh, wow. thirteen years ago. Okay. Did a eight hundred thousand dollar remodel on that. Wow. And I jacked that whole church up in the air and had it sitting on stilts <laughs> all summer long as we put a basement underneath it. Oh wow! I got pictures. I got video, everything of it, and I mean it kept me awake at night when the wind would blow. Right. Because I'm. 
We would never do anything like that. How did you take the whole building up? We <coughs> started excavating around the outside edges and putting props up. <laughs> wow. And then went underneath the existing building, there was a dirt basement in it. Oh, okay. And so we propped that all up and mm -hmm. then worked on taking the whole perimeter out from under it. Wow. It was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it was a 108-year-old awesome. building, I think, or something like that. It was built in 09, I think, originally, and then it burnt down once, and they rebuilt it. And so that was a kick, you know. Yeah. In fact, I was sat in that church, was a first Christian church of Craig. Mm -hmm. I sat and interviewed with their board to build their new church. Oh, okay. Dan was on that board. Oh, okay. Uh, and so I sat in that building and made a deal to build their new church, which is out on Ye Victory Way, That's the across one. the street from the Ford. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's got the big prow. It looks like the. Yeah. yeah. It looked like a newer building. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I made that deal with them, built that, and then the city bought that building, mm -hmm. and then I was the bid that got that remodel. So I got to not only meet with those guys in that building right. to build their building, they got to turn around and rebuild the building <laughs> that I <laughs> they left. that they left. Wow. So that was that was this just good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it makes you feel good. And um if you don't mind just to clarify for the bank, is that the Yampa Valley bank? It is now called the Yampa Valley Bank. That's the one that you built. Right. Just want to Well sure. I started out it wasn't the Moffat County, but they had right. a name change in the in the middle of it because their charter, uh, the same group of people owned the one in, in uh, Steamboat. Oh, okay. And their national charter would not allow them to have one of them called Route County and one of them called Maha County. Mm -hmm. They had to both have them both called Yampa Valley. <laughs> oh, to make, I see what you're okay. to appease everyone. Yeah. Okay. The, the national charter. Right. And so, in the interim, that uh -huh. Well, we're actually investors in the bank now. Oh, right. It's come to that point where Window, Todd. we hope that the bank makes it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So, uh, other, other, I, we've remodeled the Holiday Inn. Okay. Uh, probably five times. We've done oh. 140 some rooms at a time uh, where we wow. shut down whole wings and mm -hmm. had to remodel them completely back up to the and then we, we did the bar the restaurant the uh, we did all the suites one time mm -hmm. so we had, we've had a lot of really fun projects. I mean, yeah. Has that been your largest project? The largest project was the bank. The bank. Wow. And uh I've had several million dollar jobs, but uh, the bank was finished on time, under budget, and nobody hurt. Wow. I mean, that, that, that sounds funny, but no, I, that's on funny. time and under budget is major. Mm. Uh, we've remodeled about everything in the mall several <laughs> times over because the mall is kind of a ghost town mm -hmm. after the at one time the mall mm -hmm. itself and the pizza hut mm -hmm. were owned actually village inn was included in it too but village inn had been taken out of it but the mall and pizza hut in the 80s was for sale for six hundred thousand dollars wow and some of my partners and i it, it, over this period of time, I got involved with some of my cohorts, my, my, my excavation partner and friend, mm -hmm. D&P Construction, my HVAC and plumbing guy is Masterworks Mechanical, my floor covering guy is TLC, and I'm the general contractor. Mm -hmm. Well, the four of us created JDDJ, Jim, Dave, J, J and Dave, mm -hmm. okay, JDDJ, however that works. <laughs> and 
we started buying some of the old properties in town and refurbishing them. Mm -hmm. Before that, <coughs> there was a place. Have you done any research on the Cosgriff? Um, I know that it was a major stopping point for a lot of people coming in between Denver. I think it was a 140 Salt unit uh, hotel. Mm -hmm. In the back of the hotel was an overflow kind of a motel area that had oh. 16 units back there. Mm -hmm. When they tore down the the big hotel, they left these these two buildings with eight units in each one of them, and they were had been condemned. And I went in and bought the two condemned properties, took the 18 or the 16 units and turned them into eight units. And I now I have two fourplexes there that I've had since first 13, 14 years now. Right. Of the old uh, part of the old Cosgrove. Mm -hmm. From that, when we tore those down or tore out all the old windows, it was all glass block. All that glass block was incorporated into JW Snacks when we built it. Oh, okay. Because it's right across the street. It's mm -hmm. right across the street where the old building was and where JW Snacks is. Then there's a place downtown that's, that is now uh, an office building that was condemned that was the Craig Hotel. Mm -hmm. And it had been condemned and it had a great big bear sign on it, big fluorescent bear sign, and we took that down and salvaged it and tore the city was condemning it. We took the top floor off of it, went up another story and tore that in and turned that into business office. Mm -hmm. Saved the big bear for years and somewhere along the line somebody went to store something where we had it and just crushed it. It was, oh. uh, it was, it was probably 85, 90, 100 years old. Wow. Some of the original, it was all hand blown right. glass for the bear. And the bear had anim it, it, it one lights would turn off and the other lights would come on so it looked like the bear was walking. Right. Sorry. That's right. Turn this off. If I knew how. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. No, it's no problem. So other historic sites that we redid. Right now, there's a on the west side of town. Mm -hmm. There is a place. It was called Signal Hill for years. It was the number one restaurant. The Signal Hill restaurant. Okay. Right. We own that now. Okay. And it's a building looks bad from the outside, but it's salvageable, and we're hoping to turn it into either a restaurant uh, or take that part of that scrape part of that building and and make a a, a first part of a business. Uh, we would like to make it a medical business out there because we've got eight acres out there mm -hmm. with that building and they're common to the back road that goes into the hospital right. and to the college. The new hospital? The new hospital. And so our hopes are that someday we can do some medical buildings or something out there. Mm -hmm. But right now my partners and I are all, we're all going through this, the last few years have been kind of tough. Mm -hmm. The construction company, everybody's company is tightened up. We haven't been as near as much work, right? So we're not all as willing to throw money at something like that as we used to be. Mm. So uh, it's, you, it's it's a lot of go ahead. Well, do you know why 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 has it been slowing down so much? What do you think has been the main cause? The scare of the of the energy industry, you know. Oh, I see. So. The federal regulations federal for regs clean have energy killed us. Yeah, even the state regs have killed us. The so the scare. Uh, yeah, well, it's a scare. The scare is enough to get people to stop. Oh, absolutely. The scare stopped us. You know, wow. we're just a. I mean, I can say that all my partners are very well off, and they've all got other interests, and they're not willing to spend any money right now on investing in Craig. Right. And I mean, we've got a little bit of activity with the oil right now, mm -hmm. but the, they're still keeping it pretty tight. They won't let us do anything. Right. We need that industry in Colorado. Right. And when the bust went 
when I didn't realize that the power plant was the reason the big boom was here. Mm -hmm. When I when I started, when everybody said it was a boom, and I, there's no boom here. <laughs> and then when it went bust, holy cow! Yeah, this was a boom town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know when you you said something when you first came about um, the construction trash a uh, trash, and I've heard a couple you know in interviewing some people, um, a few of them have mentioned that Craig was kind of rough in the early 80s because there were a lot of construction crews that were involved in building the power plant that were considered a, for lack of better terms, a rowdy group, if you will. Well, the the, the area that I talked about, uh, Shadow Mountain, Shadow Mountain. Mm -hmm. the guy that got me to come out here to start my business was my cousin who was the attorney, mm -hmm. who he was also the, he was a city attorney assistant city attorney mm. and there was like 75 percent of the crime that came out of Craig came out of Shadow Mountain. Oh my. So, so you had all these traveling construction people mm -hmm. with lots of money mm -hmm. and that, that they weren't going to they weren't local they didn't care about the town mm -hmm. and so when I came to town they put me in that same category. Right right. I wasn't here to be that traveling guy that left right and so I took offense to it mm -hmm. and then I looked at it as offensively and I thought why not make that's that's who we are we're just not the bad guy mm -hmm. but we're still construction trash to a lot of people mm -hmm. and so the yeah the town was that the, there were there were people being killed in the bars and there were people being uh, the, the, the it was it was ugly. Wow. It's pretty it's changed so much. The roughest bar in town at the time was Mathers. Mm -hmm. And uh there were uh there were fights every day, every night, all the time. <clears throat> wow. There were people and okay, this is kind of interesting to, there was there there was so much trouble mm -hmm. and again I got here at the end of the boom. But at the power plant, if you were uh, a welder, you wore a welding hat. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a little short, it's a little beanie kind of hat with a little bitty brim. Mm -hmm. If you were an insulator, you wore a different kind of hat. <laughs> if you were, uh, well, I can't think of all the trades that are a boiler maker, you wore a different kind of hat. Okay, you had all these guys wearing all these different kind of hats. There were seven or eight different trades. Everybody wore a different hat. Uh -huh. Okay, it was distinct. If you walked in, you could look at somebody and know what trade they were in. Right. Okay, then you had the sheep herders in Craig. They wore a certain kind of hat. And then you had the cowboys, and they wore a certain kind of hat. Right. And so you would see the fights would start between hats. Oh, wow. It wow. Would, it, would, uh, it was amazing. So in the, I think it was about 83 or 4, Holiday Inn made it against the law, against their rules, to wear a hat in the bar to stop the fights. Wow. Because if you didn't have a hat on, you couldn't tell who you were. Right. You didn't have a reason to pick a fight. And it worked. I mean, it, it, it worked to their... I mean, for a long time, right. well, what it did was everybody quit going to Mathers, or quit, quit going to the Holiday Inn. Because they couldn't wear their hat. Because they couldn't wear their colors right if you will and wow. so yeah at the time we had a police chief that was from out of LA he was originally from Craig Colorado uh -huh. his name was Sherman that when he'd been a chief of police in LA and when he moved back to Craig to be the chief of police he brought all those because he was brought in to try and tame this wild town uh -huh. he brought in a bunch of LA cops and so the cops were carrying nunchucks, and uh, they were, it was like no nonsense. Wow. And so it was kind of funny, because you get this little bitty town where most of the people are peace-loving, you know, get along with everybody, but then you get right. this huge construction bunch of people that want to fight all the time for any reason. I mean, right. It, 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 they weren't mean fights. I mean, there were a few people. like a military bar uh -huh. for everyone you know. It, yeah. That's Marine Corps. That's Marine Navy. Corps, that's Navy, that's Army. You yeah. know, we're going to throw down just because of the color of your yeah. uniform. Wow. So it was fun.
<laughs> it was, it was from an outsider because I didn't belong. Right. You know, I wasn't, and and that was another thing getting organized here. You didn't belong to that group. And then as I met people, friends, everybody here either worked at the coal mines or at the power plant. Right. Everybody that was local. And so you were an outside everywhere you went. You know, you weren't a big construction guy, and you weren't a local coal miner or working at the power plant. Right. Where I got to meet all my friends that I met and had for years was playing sports because sports was really big in Craig. Oh, really? In oh, well, they had we had probably nine or ten men's teams, nine or ten women's teams. And we had wow that many co-ed teams through the eighties and nineties. Wow. And now if you go out there, there's no men's team, no women's team, just co-eds. And there's only three co-ed teams or something, three or four co-ed teams. Right. But there were that many people with energy. <laughs> right. This is what you'd have to, to play say. Sports. Have to play sports. What sports did you play? Did you participate? We played uh, base or softball and basketball. Okay. In city leagues. In fact, we used to play city league in this upstairs here. Oh. In fact, basketball? Well, this was a basketball court, and, oh, then, wow. in the, and then they turned it into, uh, there, somebody came up with this game called pickleball, mm-hmm. and it was a combination between tennis and, and uh, ping pong. Okay. Okay, so you played on like a half of a tennis court, and you played with a racket that was about the size of a handball racket, mm-hmm. only it was like a whiffle. Right. And, or no, it was a solid paddle, but you hit a wiffle ball, mm-hmm. like a wiffle ball that you'd play wiffle ball with. Mm-hmm. And it was a low net, a little lower than a uh, tennis net. And we played, my ex-wife and I took the city championship in doubles <laughs> in this building <laughs> upstairs. Wow. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. This building's been used for everything. Yeah. Can you imagine seeing those big heavy equipment sitting in here when it was an armory? No. No, I can't. I can't imagine there being a pool in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I, that blows that. It was gone before I got here. Yeah. I mean, it was never, I was never in it when it was a pool. Right. Right. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, go yeah, ahead. Very good stories. Yeah? Yeah. Really good stories. Yeah. Good. The, yeah, I been, well, I'll share a story. <laughs> uh, right down the street here is a bar called the Golden Cabbie. It's since closed. Oh, okay. Next door to that is a bar that is now the Galaxy Chinese Restaurant. Okay. Okay, when I came to town, the cabbie was there. The bar next to that was called the Scrap Iron. It was 1980 Halloween. And I dressed up, I kind of dark skinned, I dressed up and had a dark, dark black beard at the time mm-hmm. and black hair. Mm-hmm. So I dressed up as an Arab. Oh. And my best friend who owned one of the, we were building a bunch of houses for him in a, in a subdivision, had done uh, a, a little stint with uh, Peace Corps mm-hmm. in S- Central America. So he came back with all this Honduran garb because he was in Honduras in the in the island that I moved. Oh, that I got my house on that. Okay, so he's got this Honduran garb on. I've got this Arab, and I make a pretty good looking Arab. <laughs> and my brother had uh, some high tall shoes and a big bubble head mask on. And so we walked into this bar, and again, it was in the early 80s. Mm-hmm. Things were real loose in town, and so we were out early, and we were going to have a start downtown, and and they had contests like at the Holiday Inn and all over the bars all over town, and so we walked in there, the three of us, and we were the only three in there except some gentleman at the end of the bar, and the bartender. Well, we got done, and we decided we're going to take our beers with us because this was dead, and so we all picked our beers up and started out the bar. And we go out the door, and some guy follows me out the door, and he says something to us. And, of course, everybody's ready to fight at the drop of the hat. So mm-hmm. at the time, I didn't need glasses, but I had little wire rim glasses on, similar to what I'm wearing now. Mm-hmm. And I'm and thongs, 
okay, it's snowing. <laughs> it's Halloween. <laughs> right. And I'm okay, I'm ready to do whatever this guy's coming out screaming. Mm-hmm. Well, I find out what he says is, hey, Arab, how would you like a hollow point in your ass? And I'm going, what, what? I said, you know, I'm taking my glasses off, ready to fight this guy, and about that time a 9 millimeter pistol comes out and comes right to my face. And I'm going, I'm an American. God bless George Washington. I'm doing the right. whole thing, you know. And he's like, you asshole. Well, this was, and I think I'm saying 80. He bends me over a car right in this park right here, has me bent over with the gun, my brother comes up. The guy in Hunter and Garb, he poof, he slays, <laughs> gone. Right. My brother comes up, says, "What are you trying to do?" That's my brother, and he hits my brother over the head. Turns back around, bends me over the car. Okay, you're talking about this is the time period where everything was so rough. About that time, from I don't know where, cops came out of everywhere, mm-hmm. and they surround us. Mm-hmm. They surround us, and that guy takes his, he puts his gun in his deal, and he runs back to the cabbie. Mm-hmm. And the cops have got me, and they've got me bent over the, and I'm saying, I'm an American, I'm a carpenter, I just started a business here. Uh-huh. And I, I finally I said, my cousin's Jim Creasy, who's the assistant s- city attorney. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh. And actually, what I did say, I, I said, that guy just had me bent over a car with a pistol. You ass white, go get him. <laughs> so the cop finally takes off and goes gets him. Uh-huh. He comes back out and they still got me standing there, you know. I'm under. And the guy went in the front door. The gun went out the back. He's sitting there. They come back out and the first thing you do is you don't call a cop an ass white. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what they said to me. <laughs> and the second thing, you shouldn't mess with this guy. He's got a history. And so the next morning, I call my my cousin mm-hmm. and tell him what happens. And he knew exactly who the guy was. He said, "You're not. You're lucky. You weren't killed." Wow. He said, "You wouldn't be the first guy this guy killed." Wow. Well, when I was bent over the car, all I could see were his shoes, mm-hmm. and I was relatively new in Craig, Colorado, and he had those cowboy boots that were what they call cricket kickers. Mm-hmm. You know, they came to a point, and so I swear the next day when I went to the grocery store. Mm-hmm. Because I couldn't tell you what that guy looked like from nothing. Right. But as I walked through the grocery store, and he, I was in complete costume. Mm-hmm. He couldn't have known who I was either. But I felt like he knew who I was and was still going to get me. Right. And so I walked through the grocery store, and if I'd see somebody with boots on, like a whole oh, <laughs> 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 Wow. But that was, and I, I say that is either 80 or, I think 80, it was just before... The uh, the oh the Iranians took the hostages. The Iranian oh yeah, I, um, just for the Iranian hostage crisis. Yes, that was in seventy nine. Uh, seventy nine or eighty. Yes, it could have been seventy nine. It could have been the first. I moved here in May of seventy nine. It could have been seventy nine. It was either could have been eighty. It lasted four it was four after, days. It was after. Oh, okay. This happened. Oh, okay. I can't imagine. Of course, I wouldn't have been probably dumb enough to wear that garb right. had there been stress. You know? right, right. But this was a local guy that had nothing. He didn't want anything to do with anybody from outside Craig. Right. Is what it, the, the town was still so tight. Mm-hmm. You know, we were, we were at one point, we should have had the original CNCC college here, mm-hmm. and they voted it out. So it went to Rangeley, and now we've got the big campus back here. Right. The, the Yampa Valley Airport was supposed to be here, and mm-hmm. they voted that out, and so it's in Hayden. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just they're, they're, the old guys, old timers that were here were really. They don't want other people here. They don't want other people here. Wow. Something that you might look into is I think there were 70 some gas stations on Victory Way. 70? I believe so. I believe that's the number I've heard. And we've sat, we've got an old timers table. Uh, at coffee in the morning that we sit and talk uh-huh. about stuff. And it was like, it was on every, between the gas stations and there were a couple of refineries and bulk plants in town too. Mm-hmm. And so, wow, it might have been 50. I might be exaggerating. I know there was 50. But, wow, if you think about it, US 40 was I-70. 
right before, before I said seventy was here, and they, they told the old timers here told me that I seventy was originally scheduled to come across Rabbit Ears Pass. Do you know where that is from here? Uh, not Highway Forty. Oh, okay, yeah. But they nixed that and had to come up over a different place. So because it was all about protecting transportation of government vehicles in case oh. of war and they wanted to keep two places okay not limited to one pass right and so that's why 70 came over down through Grand Junction Grand Junction oh wow so Craig could have had I-70 go through it yeah it would have probably been completely larger it. yeah well look at rifle when I came to Craig rifle was smaller than Craig and now it's a lot bigger because yeah. I seventy access. Right. Hey, you're sitting right on the highway. Yeah, right below is right right there. Right below Glenwood there. Huh. I didn't realize that before. So anyway, I if I'd like to know if you check that out. See what you can uh, yeah. And to see how many because I know that I could take you and show you probably most of them, but there were a lot of them that were gas stations turned into, or they were gas stations slash uh, auto dealers. Right. Auto dealers had gas stations attached to them. Right. Wow. That's a really large, even 50 is a huge number. I don't think I'm wrong, though. No, that. Yeah. You start, uh, and I'm talking just from the fairgrounds, uh -huh. where the come and go is now. From the fairgrounds? From the fairgrounds to... Uh, Walmart. Wow. From fairgrounds in Craig to Walmart. All right, and, and Walmart is right on that edge, but I think I think we're right in there. But most of them were in the downtown area. I mean, every corner. Every corner. Wow. And a lot of the buildings are still there. We've remodeled several of the buildings that were gas stations into restaurants and uh, other office buildings. Wow. Some of them have been completely closed in, like they put a box around it, mm -hmm. and the original building's still inside it, but right. they've, the gas station, everything about it's gone. Wow. But uh, if you look at the corner of Breeze and Victory, uh -huh. All four corners had a gas station on it there. <laughs> and there's still currently one on the next corner. There's, if you go back to Victory, there was one on Victory and Yampa. There was one there. Several of them are still here. Several of them you can still see it were gas stations. The JW Snacks was a gas station. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, the Flyer Mine is a gas station. The gas stations on the corner, the gas station across from that. There was a gas station on the corner where City Market is, mm -hmm. where but, yeah, I'll let you guys do that. But nah, yeah, you know, we'll, it's we'll pretty amazing to that. That you think about that. It was the, and that's what made the big Cosgriff such a big deal. It was the biggest place between Denver and Salt Lake City. Right. The major stopping point. There, were, there was an old sign that was uh, a huge old sign, and it had state of the art in the 1940s. They put these big gas lanterns. Mm -hmm. They were about two feet tall, about six inches in diameter at the bottom, and they, they were like Polynesian looking. Uh -huh. And they came up and uh, had gold leaf on them and everything. And when the city condemned the Cosgriff, they had to tear down that sign. And so they came to me and said, what would you charge me to tear down that sign? And I looked at that sign, and my brother says, look at those torches. Right. He goes, I'll do this for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him, I said, I'll tear it down for $2,500. And he said, okay. Uh -huh. So I have two of those torches on the front of my cabin, out on a big deck. And I, they had state-of-the-art. They had timers in them. Uh, they were... Uh, they had an electronic igniter, that, and they, they would throw a six-foot flame. Wow. And so there were three of them, and they were stair-stepped. Mm -hmm. And so from any side of town that you came into, you could see that that sign stood up over everything. Right. Wow. 
And so I have two of those on my cabin where the front of the cabin it lights up the whole pond and everything mm -hmm. in front of the place. It's really cool. I had I gutted them and just hooked them directly to propane. Right. But uh, that's awesome. That Cosgriff was really cool. I got the old glass door out of it. It was one inch, uh, four by seven foot glass door. Then we got all the glass block out of it. And right. That was a that was really cool. Most of business took place. Hmm in there. Right. Right. All the sheep sales and mm -hmm. this is big sheep country. You probably figured that out. Yeah. At one time the largest. Yeah, I don't know that's not still. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not I'm not all sure. I wanted to ask Dan about that. All of the uh all, a lot of the land was homesteaded by sheep herders. Mm -hmm. And those guys today are still the biggest families. The sheep herders. Mm -hmm. oh, the okay. Otis is Charchalis. They're all Greek. If, it, if their name ends in an S, they're Greek. Okay. Okay. And, I mean, they're all hard working. I mean, th the fact that they had the guts to do what they did, to mm -hmm. take over the properties that they did and homestead them, and most of the Greeks weren't sheep herders when they came here. Right. Most of them were coal miners mm -hmm. <laughs> came to the U.S. and then became sheep herders. Mm hmm. But yeah, the, the, a lot of Greek influence here. That's interesting. Wow. Okay, well, I guess it was talked pretty easy, didn't it? Yeah, that was really good. Thank you. <laughs> that was that was a great, great interview.